We're a Kiwi couple living in Australia who brought a 57 foot steel trawler after she sunk in a flood and was pulled from the sea. We're now bringing her back to life. We're on to the finishing jobs after working on her for the last six years to refit and get her ready for launch as soon as possible. Brewpeg is rebuilt by us with volunteers funded by Patreons and viewers and we spend every cent we have to make sure that she's ready. She's fueled by veggie oil, diesel, solar and wind power to do research, projects and expeditions to remote places like Antarctica and the Northwest Passage. She'll be crewed by supporters from around the world. Welcome aboard. So exciting morning. We've got some parts arriving. Duncan and Julie have arrived with some goodies. Duncan's been working on this system for it's months now. To be amazing to have more freedom and yeah. Should we have a look at some goodies? Yeah. Have some goodies. So this is our nav system for brew peg. Um, well, wow, there's so much more to it than just that. So this is this is a massive box of, of parts and then goodies and all right. So let me let me run through it. So we've got a big uh, 48 inch radar, open array radar. We've got North Star Navigation System and Navico Navigation System. So this is, all of this gear has been donated by the way. So um, this gear here has been donated by Peter Meir in New Zealand, as well as the radar. Um, we've got a touchscreen LED display. This was donated by Duncan. Um, and then we've got a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm not 100% sure what all of it is, <laughs> but we'll, we'll go through it. Duncan! <laughs> Let me introduce you to our mate Duncan. My name's Duncan and uh, I'm based at uh, Caloundra which is about uh, 100 kilometres north of Brisbane and uh, I used to work uh, in the university sector and also did a lot of industry type work. Uh, so as my wife says my trade is uh, electrical electronic uh, engineer and I used to love building things, designing things and making them go in the real world. Uh, that gives me a real buzz and I was very very struck uh, by Damien and Jess uh, and uh, various volunteers around at the time uh, around the vision for Brewpeg, the, the passion, the enthusiasm. As Damien often likes to say, picking up a tool and, and, and working with it, making some neat stuff happen. So I was very inspired with that. So I mocked up this system uh, based around a Raspberry Pi. The basic architecture uh, that is evolving on Brewpeg right now, and some of this is on the bridge, and, and we're going to be working on this over the next few weeks, using existing architectures where there are existing architectures, uh, we're basing... Uh, the system around a spine of NME A2000s. So bearing in mind where Brewpeg is looking at going around the world, they're going to be a long way from anywhere for a lot of the time. Uh, so we really need to uh, cater for system failure. If things go wrong, what's the backup system? So a lot of what we do, we've got two of. Damien and I are building a sensor system around the engine right now with the idea of pulling that data in, setting up the displays. So you're seeing some of the displays uh, starting to grow on the bridge. Uh, so we've got a lot of fine tuning to do, a lot of installation to do um, to get this all going. And then uh, I, I always thought this is going to be a short job. It's not going to be. It's going to be a lifelong job, I think, um, because as uh, Brewpeg goes through its adventures around the world, we'll, we'll find things that need to be done, extra things that need to be logged, uh, perhaps have other scientific questions that we could answer using this sort of system. Morning. It's all right. has been working very very studiously in the background to get this this whole thing working i knew so, it would be a bit of stuff but like yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, it's astounding i yeah. see what you mean now yeah it would it would leave a space is that it? one person or two person one okay yeah that's, that's pretty easy I'll just grab any of these boxes yeah i love the way they're chitter chatting the whole time <laughs> i think i'm going to wait for this for a long time it's really cute i was starting to laugh I thought, oh no shut up <laughs> I actually made this trailing edge here in case in case one was providing more lift than the other. I made the trailing edge so I could bend it. Oh yeah, trim. Yeah, yeah. So when we get this instrumentation going and the fuel consumption going, that yeah. we can measure those tests. Okay, it's gonna be interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll uh, actually have evidence of yes, yes. they're actually yeah, give exactly. a bit of efficiency. Yeah. Data rather than subjectivity. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I love that because then there's just no guesswork. It's That's right. It's beautiful. It, it does this. It doesn't do this. That's right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to um, measuring the motor as well, the yeah. output from the motor when we change yes. over to veggie oil. I think yeah, that'd be yes. very interesting. So. Just anticipation to sweat a bit today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is Brewpeg's wheelhouse. We've got um, our engine control dials. We've got our uh, screens that we were going to use for nav. These are going to be replaced. We have a touch screen up here. That's this has been donated by Duncan. It's going to become our engine 
um, monitor, I suppose, monitoring station. This is most of the radar and um, depth sounder and, and sort of navigation sides of things. This equipment's donated by Peter Meir. It's mounted to a board ready to go, it's all fused up. And then over here we've got a bunch of different stuff that has to be fitted into the boat. This is gear donated by Duncan. But with this is this is the Raspberry Pi um, that the system runs off, power supply and so on, all mounted to a board. Um, and that's going to be mounted, let me spin around and come back over here again. So we've got, this is our uh, engine gauges. Behind the engine gauges we've got a 12 volt supply from the uh, from the engine and then we've got various you know different cables and so on that we can run around the boat so that's designed so that we can access it really easily but over the back here in the rabbit's warren of cables this is going to be the space that the data logging system is going to be sitting in the reason we're putting it here is because if you look down here that's a 200 millimeter fan that we mounted a while back so that we can have cooling into this area so we're going to be mounting it in here so that we can have a fresh supply of air swapping around we're going to move our switch and change a lot of our network design based on this but underneath the dash essentially is where our navigation gear is going to live first things first it was time to pull the old dash apart so we can start fitting the new gear well i'll start um getting this wired up so we've got some power up here okay yeah well i'm almost ready to take power oh, nice. you're the In Brewpeg's battery bay, we've got our three lithiums, we've got our inverter over the back there, and then all of the tools that I forgot that I left in here last time. But what I want to show you is on this panel here, we've got um, various switches and fuses and so on. We need to take our, um, this is our 24 to 12 converter, goes up into a 12 fuse block. We're going to take a power source from this 12 fuse block, run it around the various conduits, etc., up behind the wall, and we're going to be sticking it up in behind this area of the dash. So where the engine gauges and so on sit, we need to have a separate house bank power supply. I'm going to use six millimeter conductor, so that should allow up to about 30 amps for 12 volt. Um, that's gonna be our sort of a backbone supply, and then we're gonna split it off from there. Should be more than enough for what we need to do, but I'd rather run thicker cables up for that so that we can always pull power off that in the future if we ever need to. Ah, two blue lights, that's good. Whoop, whoop. All right. Um, what we'll do is before plugging any peripherals in, we'll just fire the whole lot up. Yep. There we go, that's booting. Nice. We have lights, which is positive. Yep. Even over here. Yep. And then screen. Now, if you want to fire up this stuff, uh, you can you can have the honors. <laughs> that's us. Right. Uh, we can overlay well. Huh. They're showing the new dredged area. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah. it's a fairly recent like addition to that map because that's only happened in the last year or two, or a couple two years ago. I've set it up to automatically download the um, the files, and uh, when we get AIS data, they can superimpose and all of this as well. Yeah, right. I like the little tide things that are on there. Yeah, so that we can get some GPS signal. I'm gonna go and stick the GPS receiver up on the radar mast. When I built the radar mast a few years back, I added in extra ports like this. So we can just screw things in and out. So it's just a piece of stainless welded onto the radar mast. However, today I don't have the adapter needed. I need to go and buy some different pieces. So I've got this real daggy old piece of plywood that I threw up on the top a long time ago. I'm gonna sit it on top of that and then run the cable down into the wheelhouse. I'm just trying to remember, so North Star, let me see. Position, I think that's it. North Star will tell us about the satellites it can see. There we go, is that it? There we go. Oh, so wow. there the satellite's North Star can see right now. Okay. Doing well. The back of my garage was only picking up three or four. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. So there's a story to that tune. <laughs> We've got some butcher birds around us and they've got beautiful songs in the morning. Yeah. 
And I said, oh, that'll be a great startup sound for this. Yeah, yeah. So when it starts, it goes through that little tone. Right, so we're listening and, to Butcher Boots. Yeah, and the, and the alarm that was going off before, yeah. which I will again in a second, same thing. Yeah, that, nice. That was, I, I analysed the Butcher Boots signal and then synthesised the thing, so it sounds a little, realize, more, little more alarming. You realise we have to keep that sound now? Yes. Yeah. We do. So this is now the Signal K server. Uh, it's the one that collects all the signals from very, various different uh, sources. Yeah. We set up data connections. So I've got data connections to talk to uh, the North Star kit. We've got yeah. a data connection to talk to an MEA 2000 bus over there. Now at the moment, we're not connected to anything, so we haven't got GPS going from North Star to that system. Um, we can do data browsing within this. So in fact, this little screen, if you can see that, that's actually a cut and paste from my own boat. I did some data capture pasted it in there and I could simulate running of the whole thing before I had access to other data. Right. The analog data collector, okay. uh, which will sit down in the engine bag. So if we hook that in, that would jump to life. Yeah, right. Uh, then we've got uh, the two Nemia uh, connectors okay. sitting there. Yep. So what this means is we're not getting GPS. Well, that's correct. We haven't plugged it in from the North Star yet. Yep. Uh, we don't have a NMEA connection. Same thing. We haven't plugged that connection in. Yep. Uh, we don't have the engine data source, which is UTP da UDP data, so yep. it's not connected. We can connect that in a second. Uh, so basically, anything wrong up here, this, this red alarm will go off. Okay. Nice. So now, if we plug in, so this will be plugging in the North Star kit, and the Nemia data is sitting on that. Now, what we can then do is we'll go back to Signal K and we'll watch it. It'll eventually work it out. Uh, I monitor all of this and if anything becomes stale, it doesn't change for a period of time, there are alarms that come up saying data stale. Yeah, right. Um, How now, long does it take for the data to become stale? Uh, about 15 seconds, Okay. I look for. Yeah. Uh, if, it's re if it's restored, it'll respond to that straight away. Yeah. Now, of course, we're sitting still, so I expect data to be stale for uh, speed over ground. Yeah, right. So now we've got GPS is live, NMEA is live, so the dash is now restarting. Was that a whistle yeah. alarm? That was the butcher bird. Yeah. That's the butcher bird start. We've got a bit of a development area for propulsion, so that's where we might develop some of the water and fuel monitoring okay. uh, yep. aspect. Um, some placeholders for the electrical system, uh, the fuel, uh, sorry, fire panel. Uh, we need to have a bit of a discussion on how to best manage fire detection around the place. This is uh, the processor performance itself. Before we go too much further, I want to say thanks to a couple of guys that have made an extraordinary difference to the boat. Duncan, you've met him a little bit on this episode, but what you probably don't see behind the scenes is just how much work he does. So he's in video conferences with us frequently. I probably text him maybe 20 times a day between the two of us bouncing ideas and conversations back. The amount of expertise that he's brought to this build is extraordinary in terms of what he understands around a lot of this stuff um, and just how humble it, he is. Like, it's incredible, you know, you'll. You'll just say something off the cuff about, oh, I wonder if you could do such and such. And then he sort of goes, yeah, one time I was doing that at this place and we did this automation and da -da -da, and it's like, holy crap, the amount of stuff that he brings to this project is pretty remarkable. So I, I just, I really want to say thanks because he's, he's just so skilled at what he does, as well as the fact that he's just so generous and humble with the way that he has his knowledge sort of come into the world. It's, it's just amazing to be around him. I really, really enjoy working with him. Um, and I wanted to say thanks and just acknowledge him. There's another person I want to acknowledge as well, Peter Meir, the man that donated most of the hardware um, that's used in this North Star Navico uh, navigation system that we're, we're running. So Peter um, has a, a hell of a lot of industry experience when it comes to setting this type of gear up. Um, I won't go into too much detail around his background. I don't know how much he wants to share with wants me to share. Um, he himself is a really humble guy as well, um, and just a real down to earth Kiwi. He's he's from the motherland, um, so he's he's an awesome dude to work with. He's again sort of similar to Duncan in the sense that he's um, spent a lot of time on video conferences with us. Um, we bounce ideas back and forth. Um, extraordinary amount of knowledge around setting things up um, that he's sort of you know donated to the project and um, it, it's really enhanced what we can do this it's just something that we would never be able to get to the level that we're getting to without both Duncan and Peter so I really just wanted to say thanks um, you two guys have been extraordinary and we we're just absolutely grateful for what you guys have done so this is the radar that uh, this is the scanning base lovingly hand-packed uh, right, so we need to figure out how we connect the radar to the rest of the navigation gear. So, 
What's happening okay. at that end? Lots of cables. Is that free? Yep, you're right. Let's come on out. Oh, okay, cool. So this is separate. All right, that's what we that's wanted to know. One. That's our big old plug, and we've got heaps and heaps of cable. So that's awesome. So I think it must rotate. So you, oh, there you go. You've got a little hinge and a lid. All right. And there's the hardware. Right. So it must be an earth strap holding this down. Yeah, there is. They mentioned that. Okay. Oh, oh there we go. So all our connectors up here. Okay. Right. Is that a cable clamp? I'm looking down on there. Yeah, yep. say so. Okay. Oh, and there's a P clamp over there as well. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, a little hint. Oh, right. So this hinges up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cute. Yeah, yeah. So you could you could rock that back and it should theoretically should hold it. itself. Yeah, have you got that? Yeah, I got this. Yeah. Beauty. So it is pretty flexible. That's a plus. So, yeah. So that. Can we do, can you kind of just, you know, can we just sort of yeah, bring maybe. It rather than do it quite kind of. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Or... Yeah, the, I think so. The issue I was wondering about is if you create a magnetic field, yeah, if you've yeah. got a big loop. Yeah. But I don't know. Oh, it's, it's okay to coil them and sort of have them so that they're not going to move and do crazy things, but... So the radar plate you've got up on the mast now, yep. has it got any mounting holes at all? No, but it's a, just a big flat stainless plate right. so we can okay. do whatever we want. Right. Yeah. Now I saw it on one of your videos. Uh, actually, might be the last. No, your seat. It was your yeah. seat when oh, you were on the... Right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, then I wonder if maybe, maybe I'll go up and put this up okay. and get the cable down. Yeah. It's so long it requires two people. <laughs> so there's no cable, it'll be straight waveguard. Perhaps I could be making that up. So it looks like a waveguard. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hello. So the two waveguards marry together. Oh, the energy energies pass through there. They're both female. Yeah, so, so they just it, it, think of it as a water pipe for RF energy. Yeah. So they'll butt up closely, yeah. uh, and the RF energy travels up in, inside the guide itself. Right. So as long as those two rectangular notches, guides, marry up perfectly together, uh, then we've got the RF, uh, so you get the, the transmission, then the pulses, oh, the echoes right. coming back. Okay. When I built the radar mast a few years ago, I had no idea how big to make the hole for the plug that the radar would use. I chose wrong! Doesn't fit! So plan B is go the other way, use the open end of the wires, push them up from the bottom and out the hole. What I'm thinking is rather than using rope or something along those lines, just a bit of TIG rod and then I can probably curve it down like so. Hopefully Duncan can see it. Can you see that at all Duncan? Stand by. That it? Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, that's all you got. Okay, give me a minute. All right, gently pull it back. You right there? Yep. Oh Success. So we've been pondering where to mount this. So we've got our cable gland at the back here and we've got an on off switch just down in there. You can sort of see on off, on off, on off. Not 100% certain if this is the back or the front. Logically to me, I would mount that at the back and then have the cable being as short as possible. pretty industrial looking uh, cable gland, yeah. crikey. Uh, there's a rubber gland in there, if you can see that sort of black rubber that compresses down, the more you squash it with this big aluminium nut. But we've got shielded cable, so this is basically shielded cable. Um, 
the stainless on the outside provides some um, radiation protection and so on from the various um, electron doodakies squeezing down the cables that's pretty technical uh, and then we also have to get all of these through the rubber um, cable gland in there okay I opened up the radar and it's easier than I thought so we've got this big aluminium washer that goes in first that sort of sits down in this area here if you can see that and then the cables go through but the rubber actually has a split in it so that just makes it really simple to clamp it around there and push them all in Now that we've got it bolted down, it's time to start wiring it up. So shielded cable, as you saw earlier, comes through the cable gland. It's nice and tight. We can haul on that and it doesn't go anywhere. We've got a cable clamp here, a P-clamp here ready to go. And then up here on the circuit board, you can sort of see all the different connectors, various connectors here that sort of plug into it. So we're gonna go through, figure out where everything sits, and then fasten it down, and we're ready to start plugging some power through to this thing. Righto, we're done. All the wiring's in there nice. We've got it up in here, all the plugs are in their right position. Time to close this lid and start getting this thing put together. going on so we've got um, this is the main loom for our gear we've got various pieces mounted sort of down up in here we've moved our switch we've got part of the Navionic uh, part of the Navico gear in there uh, the screens over the back we're just trying to figure out well, this is our main power at the moment we're getting a fuse block the same as this one here but this is 12 volts uh, running off the engine battery we need a 24 volt over here running off the house battery so we'll get that organized soon they just don't have any at the shops um, and that block determines where our screens get mounted so we're trying to yeah just compromise with a few different things at the moment but we're in the midst of chaos everywhere the radar is on we have our radar cable coming down from this is the bottom of the radar mast here so we're going to route that plug there and about 350 meters of cable that has to tuck in behind the back of the dash over here and that routes down into somewhere in here where we're going to be mounting our uh, radar equipment. Our gear starting to get fitted. Duncan's going through and cleaning it up. We've got various power cords and data cables and so on. So we've got the likes of this where we're creating basically a loom for each sort of variation, whether it's data or power or what have you. And then we're going to start routing it along the back and then into this area where all the wiring is. So we're going through and tidying it up. We're getting, you know, um, conduit and starting to just clean everything up figuring out how we're going to do our hinges and so on because we're going to have these panel panels sort of hinge up or hinge down or velcro in depending on um, how we do it this is going to be removed and we're going to replace this with aluminium get rid of this old chipboard that we had as a kind of a placeholder um, we're going to be basically making this out of aluminium and then covering that up same over here there'll be an aluminium plate that these two screens fit in but also because these this area was built for 21 inch screens and these are 15 um, we're actually quite pleased with that because it's going to give us some flat space so we can start mounting um, you know in the in the areas where it's going to be flat panels we can have switches and so on so that we can have like on off switches as opposed to having to reach around behind things and you know start pressing buttons on the back of these control uh, boxes which are going to be mounted down up and sort of under here you don't want to have to reach in every time to turn them on so a few things to happen this is going to be fun I'm too short I can't even see over the dashboard so we could redesign the dash for short people. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, that's no, that's that's not a, a, that's not politically correct. No, it's not, is it? Yeah. No. Would you like to wear high heels, sir? Oh, much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's wrong and who's right I cannot decide
I'm anal because I like to have the cables all perfectly run. As in not twisting? Yeah. I don't know how people can twist them and still sleep at night. <laughs> So, um, of course, Dame doesn't do anything by half. <laughs> Look at the size of the zip tie. One zip tie. Normal size? Dame in size. Yeah, I saw them in a shop and I thought, that was too awesome. Yeah. You know, um, we need Bigger a drawer. Ones. No, a drawer just for zip ties because you've got so many types there. That's true. And amounts. I've got zip ties that are too long to fit in drawers. So I've got zip ties on zip ties. Yeah. And that's my system to disappear 457,000 feet of radar cable. It's a lot. Have you explained it by the, um, the cable was so long? No. There's a reason why this cable is so long. Radars run on, <laughs> radars run on a tuned length. So if, I don't know, let's say arbitrary 100, 100 feet of cable, just for arbitrary numbers. If you shorten it um, or make it longer, the radar basically gives you funny readings. It'll say things are shorter or further away or more or less um, interference in your signal and so on. So they basically are designed to run on a tuned length. So however long this is, you want to keep it exactly the same. That's why we're not cutting it. We're just coiling it up and um, basically getting rid of it. And that's set at manufacturer, right? Yeah, yeah, the manufacturer sets that length, yeah. Yeah. So, so does this indicate we're a small boat? Because there's an enormous amount of cable that we don't need to use. Well, we were discussing this earlier. Duncan and I were discussing that when you're choosing a boat to buy, buy the radar first, and then and then buy the boat, boat. to suit the radar yeah. cable. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, because then, then you don't have to coil it. <laughs> so you need to find a bigger drawer to. to yes, raise. maybe that's the answer. I, I agree. Like... Yeah, I agree. Darling, I need to buy a bigger bigger trawler. I've got too much radar. <laughs> yeah. We got greedy. We pulled out a box, and we thought that it didn't need the box. This one here. This is a network box for the Navico gear. We thought we might be able to run without using it, but it turns out that's not the case. So um, various radar processor and some other bits and pieces is having a bit of a freak out without it. So Duncan is about to be picked up in about 10 minutes. He's furiously working <laughs> <laughs> to plug this in to see if we can get it all going before he goes. You got a hammer, Damien? Nothing inspires confidence in a person working on electronics when they ask for a hammer. So what do we do? We just press the you, you need a speech? <laughs> Jess? No, she had a chance. It's alright, you had your chance. We're, we're going to turn the radar on. Is there anything on the manual? Procedure? Yes, well, that would be. That's, that's we plenty. We could B. read the manual. I probably shouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> well, no, we were hoping we could just plug it in and press a button. Yes. Like the go button. Yes, you should hope, yeah. yeah. But when it doesn't, it's always good to. RTFM. We were out of time and we weren't going to get this thing spinning before Duncan had to go. The reason was kind of ridiculous and you'll probably laugh at us. On off, on off, on off. Let's just take a moment to appreciate that again. On off switch. Alright, yeah, no need to rub it in. Alright. You've been working solidly the whole time. Oh. Every second. It's that close, that close. Yeah, we were pretty blooming close. Yes. Um, oh, they're at there. Okay, yeah. Are you happy right. with this? I'll just leave it. Uh, leave it. It's, it's probably enough that I'll it's a bit of a talking point. Yeah. So all that stuff you can relate to boxes up on the dash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah up it's there. Brilliant.
Oh, Okie dokie. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, eh? Oh, very welcome. Heaps of fun. Alrighty, um, so be in touch and all being well, see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah. I'm going to have to race into a meeting. Do you want to have the honours? I would, I'd love it. This is very cool. It's, it's really uh, very clear, eh? Yeah, it's nice, eh? Now there's really... still tuning to do on it, so I don't know how clear it's going to be just yet. That one? Yep. And then you'll hit transmit. And that should turn everything on, I think. But that's positive. <laughs> that noise you can hear is a bearing we need to replace. That is very, very cool. So, so you can see the details. This is the rings go out every three miles, so we're looking 12 miles out. Right. But we can go out to. We can go out in like small increments. That's 64 miles. Wow. So we're looking 64 miles out. That is brilliant. It's pretty cool. Eh? I thought it was 48, but it's 64. Um, so just coming close. So 12 miles. So what we're picking out here is all of the clouds and stuff. So like basically that's looking forward. But if you look at over there, you can sort of see there's like darker oh, yeah, clouds yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's all of these rain clouds here, and there's obviously some in front that we can't quite see because of the shake off. But um, yeah, it gives you an idea of what we'll see. And you can alter how sensitive it is or how like you can increase or decrease that sensitivity so um and also when you come in closer so you can go really really close you can see a lot more detail so that's looking at six miles so we can see pretty much everything's right in front of us yeah it's quite Jeez, that's great isn't it yeah and then one of the things we can do once duncan gets the open cpn chart plotter running like on the whole system the way that we want to so we can overlay that on top of the map so we can see mm. you know you'll see the you know the coastline or whatever like you actually see all the distances yeah thanks peter we actually have a radar but... we honestly thought that the radar thing would happen you know a year after launching and i thought it would be a crap radar like a tiny little thing that we could <laughs> afford that would be that you'd put on a tinny <laughs> For people that are not in Australia and don't know Australianisms, tinny is basically Australianisms for a tiny little aluminium boat, like three metres long, four metres long. Like a tender. Tender. Tinny. Dingy. Yeah. Tinny. <laughs> I was trying to think of reasons, ways to say titty without saying titty. We got three words out and one of them was tinny. <laughs> Pow. Pretty quick. Yeah. And then there's like built in chat plotters inside this as well. Wow. Yeah, cool. It's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. It is, it's absolutely cool. I feel like it's a bit of an omen. No, nope, we're definitely going to do this thing. Yeah. We're going to be going places early on. Yeah. Like not... Uh, not sitting in harbour waiting. We're actually going to get, yeah. in, get using it. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot to build yet. This is some of the weather front that's been passing over the east coast of Aussie. We've only really clipped the, the edge of it. There's a lot uh, of worse weather south of us, a lot of flooding, um, there's a lot of destruction, and it's it's a really large area too, like maybe 1,500 kilometers from bottom to top. Um, we're not really getting any damaging issues up this end. There's been quite a lot of thunder and lightning, uh, but there's not been a lot of rain. We've probably only had maybe 50 millimeters of rain, but some of the cloud formations are pretty spectacular. They don't look real when you're standing outside and you're actually staring at them. idea of how fast these lightning flashes are happening this footage is shot in real time this is me talking while I'm filming give you an idea of just how many there are around us we got a wee bit of rain going on might be able to see it there on the neighbor's boat oh yeah and there's some lightning and thunder and so on so that bright light that you can see just there <laughs> keeps going out just like that <laughs> uh, okay so we've run out of power in the marina we're running on batteries in the boat at the moment which is fine we can last quite a while there comes a time in every boy's life where he decides that things have got to change it's gone too far we can't carry on with the way things have been we need to do something different 
introducing something that's a little different. In all its glory. Do, 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 do. It's like a link with the stars. <laughs> You're so excited. Just go gently with your body, honey. It's bigger than I thought. Wow, it's not what I thought it would look like at all. <laughs> Biggest instruction manual in the world. I love it. How does this survive storms and things? What about yeah. like 40 knots? you think it would be made to spec, eh? Yeah. It's about to handle like storms happen all the time. Like just at a guess, I'd say Elon's probably aware that weather happens. I'm just going to throw that out. You're on a first name basis? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Elon and you? He's sending me internet personally. <laughs> <laughs> Dame help me organize this this is for me this little <laughs> scooter and it works i went into the office and i could turn back around i could go all the way to the to the computer and back out and look at this this feature that it has stop digging up <laughs> look what he keeps doing look look what he's done <laughs> can you stop ruining the paintwork please with your little what is it called drifting no um i'll try it's not really a burnout because I haven't popped burnout. the tire. I haven't popped the tires yet, so it doesn't doesn't count. Burnout's the word I was looking for. It's just more of a tire warm warm up for when you do your run down the quarter mile. Because you don't want to blow the tires. I know you're excited about Starline, <laughs> but you've got to stop ruining the, the paintwork. I, mean, I don't want to have to paint this bloody floor again. Fine. Right, so I've got it sitting in its semi-permanent location. Um, this is just going to be to test it out, and then once I know how to sort of set it up properly, I'm going to mounted up on here somewhere probably at the top believe it or not this isn't staying i've just literally plugged it in and haven't touched it i have there's nothing to turn on and then i ran a speed test so i'll go and see what it actually did normally on brewpeg we run on 4g cell phone um, mobile internet and we get on a really really good day we might get 15 to 20 megabytes download and we might get 10 or 12 upload on a that's a really good day most of the time it sits in single figures so <laughs> you know yeah just knows this pain when we're trying to upload one of our episodes <laughs> and it's sometimes it takes a day and a half to upload an episode and we're just it's just crawling along at a glacial pace so um hopefully this is slightly faster here we go brace yourself brace yourself Effie. All right, turns out we've got no internet. It's not worth it. Starling's off. Let's try that again. That's less than I thought it was going to be. Growing, growing, still growing. Not necessarily slowing down. Okay, that's not as fast as I've seen, but that is blistering for brew pig. Hello. It's just saying hello. Hello, satellite. Hello. I'm down here. That's how Jess diagnoses IT systems. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's sort of more what I was expecting. Sin